YouTube, what's going on? What's up, Winksters? How you doing? Hey, YouTube, what's up? Hi, Winksters. That's your new name for this channel. I know the Bible says I uh, don't talk about winking your eye, but it also says in the twinkling of an eye. So, you know, there's a lot of discrepancies out there, but with the channel's name being Religion Wink TV, I feel it's safe for us to go ahead and call ourselves Winksters because we're looking at the world side eye and all this evil bull, okay? That's his evil bull crap. We look at it side eye. And I like to say on this channel, we sipping all the tea we can with no shade, talking everything up to Yahweh. Why? Because if you believe, damn it, you can. And that's what's going to lead me into this story today about a young lady who didn't have a Bible, didn't know Jesus in the flesh. All she had was her, her, her relationship with the Most High God. And I want to ask you this, guys. Especially the ladies, but guys, you pay attention because you may let this go down in some of y'all relationships. See, this woman, this woman named Hannah, she had a problem where she couldn't get pregnant. And she was married to a man who had two wives, one named Hannah and one named Penia. Penia had children. Her womb was open, but Hannah's wasn't. And what I want to ask you ladies is, have you ever been scorned, mocked, picked on, bullied, uh, harassed, persecuted for not being able to have children, for being with a man who has another woman, whether it's kids involved or not, who's outside of your relationship? Uh, with the other woman appearing to be doing better than you? Um, have you ever got to the point where you were so much in despair and so sorrowful you can talk about this situation? Well, uh, I think Hannah's story is so close to so many of ours. So before I tell my story, listen to Hannah's story, and I'll come back with the rest of my commentary so that you all will understand and know that uh, the way the world gets over things and deal with things is differently biblical if you got the right stories to live by and the right teachings to go by. So I think this teaching, hell, it helped me, it'll help you, and it'll help those who think they haven't went through this because the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So with that being said, hear Hannah's story, and then I'll come back with my story, and if you're an honest person, you'll put your story down below in the comments, and we can talk about it. Why? Because we sipping all the tea we can with no shade, talking everything up to Yahweh. Talking everything up to Yahweh. Sipping everything up to Yahweh. Everything up to Yahweh, okay? So with that being said, enjoy this video, uh, enjoy this portion of the video, and again, I'll give you my thoughts and my testimony at the end. Thank you. Today is Wisdom's Winning Ways, um, and today I want to tell you about a black woman, a woman who exemplified real relationship with the Most High God and creator of some, not all. Because some won't claim Yahweh, the God of the Bible, but this woman did. And when I tell you she has paved the way for many of us, you will agree. For some reason, people are afraid of the Bible. Hell, I'd be too if I didn't read it for myself or for communion with the Most High God of it and seek His kingdom and all His righteousness so that He may add all the rest. That is everything I need to be led by the Holy Spirit through this world, not ignorant of Satan's devices, so that he doesn't gain advantage of me, according to the Bible. But most Christians and people who say they go to church and love God don't always do what the Bible say do. Because he is just a man, narrowly looked upon. This would be Satan. 
who weakened the nations, and that would be the Negroid people and tribes of the Most High Yahweh, to oppress us, and uh, it's that way until this day. But this woman didn't let the persecutions of Satan and his evil-ass devices, or his son, his brothers, his nephews and cousins, the Bible says, to trap her under the oppression of their slavery. A slave to me is one who tries to enslave people because they aren't satisfied in their life, needing to control people because of their out of controlness and out of touch with reality. That's most people who are demonic and evil. They're out of touch with God and would allow themselves to kill, steal, and destroy the life of another. But not this woman. Mm -mm. Not this woman here. This woman kept her faith in Yahweh and overcame her enemies. Without the blood of Jesus. I said without the blood of Jesus. Yes, I said without the blood of Jesus, people. Jesus, Yeshua, whatever you call him. I call him the Black Messiah Christ, a messenger from Yahweh. Had not been crucified on the cross yet or hung on a tree according to Acts 5 and 30, whichever you believe. Her faith was in God, like mine, and it wasn't in Christ. I believe in Christ, but my faith, my hope, my eternal life is not in Christ, but in the Most High God who created Christ. And Christianity will allow you to get it mis messed up, as Christ is the God, and God don't exist, because all you hear is Jesus, 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 Jesus' blood. And that's wrong. She believed that God can get her through her tribulations. Not Jesus, because in the flesh, he hadn't even manifested yet. Her spirit was connected to God, and her soul followed. See, I always tell you, and I have a book called Peace I Speak to the Three-Part Me. I have a flesh, I have a soul, I have a spirit. My spirit is connected to God. My flesh is connected to the hell. And my soul has to make a decision where it will dwell. Heaven or hell. The spirit of God or the, the, the wickedness of evil. And so, her soul made a decision to not let what was going on around her to affect her faith in God. Just like me and so many of you out there. If you believe that people existed with God without the Bible and without Jesus being manifested in the flesh. That is the God of the Bible without Christ being manifested in the flesh. Christ has always been with God spiritually because he is the word of God. And when God spoke a word into existence, the world was framed by him. And this is what it had to say about this young lady I'm about to tell you about. Now there was a certain man of Ramathahim of Zip of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Pen 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 Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city early to worship, and to sacrifice unto the Lord his host of Shalom, and the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah, he had gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Her adversaries also provoked her sore. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when he when she went up to, to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than to, than, than to ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon 
the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitter soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon this affliction of mine, thy handmaid, and remember me, and, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give me thy handmaid of a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass that she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah said, Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. Her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. See, people drunk in the Bible, y'all. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And then the Old Testament come along and tell you not to drink. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Balia, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. They rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew, his, knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So when they say knew or went into in the Bible, that means they had intercourse. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good, tarry until you have weaned him. Only the Lord establish his words. So the women abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him upon her in three bullets and one ephah of flour, and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. And when, the, and when they slew a bullock, and brought the child to Eli, and she said, O oh my Lord, as the soul liveth my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord hath given me the petition which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he liveth, and he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Chapter 2 of 1 Samuel And Hannah prayed, and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, my horn is exalted in the Lord, my heart is enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, that they may stumble and gird it with, their, with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is wet feeble. The Lord killeth and make it alive, he bring it down to the grave and bring it up. The Lord make it poor and the Lord make it rich, he bring it low and lift it high. He raises up the poor out of the dust, he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of the glory. For the pillars, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. 
for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength to his kings, and exalt the horn of his anointed. So, Psalms 105 and 15, I believe, says, Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. And what's going on in this world a lot of times is that people are not being under the uh, protection of the Almighty God. And a lot of weapons is being formed against them, especially in relationships such as Hannah and such as mine. August 13, 2005, I got married, and probably, I'll say March, I'll say October 2006, I knew God had showed me that my ex-husband was cheating. So, about March 2007, you know, you go through all of that, uh, what you're going to do, uh, what you're going to do to make it right, what you're going to do to make it better, and sometimes, like Elkina, these men will start giving you more than enough to try to shut your mouth up and try to just, you know, keep you happy because you can't have kids or you can't, you know, bear children or, you know, they just want to be out there cheating. And some women is okay with that. In my case, my ex-husband knew I wasn't having any more kids prior to us getting married. He went out one night, got drunk, said, I said he put on his beer goggles. <laughs> Anyway, nonetheless, however she looked, what she looked, what she was doing, who, you know, the rumors thereof, he went out and got another woman pregnant. I said, okay, go get tested, go get HIV, let's go to the Department of Health. He didn't want to do that, so I can't, you know, engage in uh, raw sex with this man anymore. Uh, because I know now he's cheating. A lot of women know and they still do it and end up sickly. So I just hope this encouraged somebody, okay? So anyway, I, you know, after me finding out that he had cheated, it was like, damn, he was my first boyfriend, off of my first sexual encounter, okay? Oh, off and on over the years, never had kids, end up, you know, finally hooking up, settling down, getting married, had no kids again, and then um, he go and cheat. So in his heart, he didn't purpose nothing in his heart to be faithful. So he was the type of guy that probably uh, would tell you, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, like so many people to today hide behind the word of God in a cloth and have no spiritual godliness in them whatsoever or the power thereof. And sometimes we believe that lie, go along just to get along, just to belong, have a man, have a relationship. And I got tired of that. So, so I divorced him, you know, I do apologize. So I got divorced, okay? Some of you women out there are still in relationships and you have to consider it for yourself. Anyway, what I want to say is just like Hannah, I didn't go fighting in the street. I didn't let that persecution overcome me. I didn't get jealous, mad, angry. I went before the Lord. I remember the day I found out, you all. And I'm, I'll do another live on divorce, marriage, all that. This is interesting. But um, I remember the day I had locked my keys in the house. So I seen him go in the house and I seen him go out with a bag because I was a school crossing officer at that time. And I lived right down the, up the street from where I was crossing on the corner. So I go, you know, it's about time for me to get off, but maybe I left a little 10 minutes earlier. So I go home and I realize, oh, I can't get in. So boom, I went trailing. So I went trailing the way he went, found him, and as he saw me walking, he was holding hands with another woman and pushed her like to the side, came to me. It was like a corner store. He made her go in the store. He came to me in front of his mother's house and was like, yo, what's up? I'm like, I need my key. I locked my key in the house. And that's all I said. I didn't question the woman. I didn't say anything. I just need to get in my house because I knew once I got in my house, his ass was out. <laughs>
<laughs> and it was a fine time for me to lock my damn keys in the house, but that's what God, we always take things and be like, oh, no, that's wrong. Uh, 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 I lock my keys in the house. Oh, man, what's going on? No, sometimes things happen so God can show you what you need to see. If I'd have never locked my keys in the house that day, I'd have never known my ex-husband was cheating. And I would have been gone on like our marriage was so perfect while the whole rest of the town knew he was out there cheating. And so God will show you. We like to say, oh, I'd rather them tell me the truth. No, 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 no. God will show you the truth. Stop relying on man, because man will lie to you. God will show you what you need to see. And what else I want to take from this story is some of you need to be like Hannah. I, I didn't raise my two boys, okay? I got three children. They're grown now. They're going to be 35 and 30, uh, 35 and 20, 29 this year. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I have a 24-year-old daughter. I raised her and got the two grandkids here with me now. But um, I didn't raise them, so in a sense, I couldn't offer them up to the Lord like I did my daughter. She was raised under the anointing of the Most High God, um, but my sons weren't. And some of you out there need to offer your children up to the Most High God because he can protect them even when you can't, and he can protect you when they're not protecting you. You understand what I'm saying? It's just protection for the whole household. Believe what I say. And also what I want to say is, um, I think I touched on it, that in relationships, you women will settle for um, men just paying your bills and men buying you clothes and men giving you food and men giving you cars just to say you have a man while you know he's out there cheating. I can't tell anybody to leave their relationship. I can only tell you for me, for Hannah, Hannah stayed with hers because back then, I guess it was allowed. But then when Christ come along, he say one woman, one man, and that's the institution of marriage. His uh, mother and cleave to his wife and become one flesh is. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the Bible. But for me, I'm comfortable. I'm single. I'm young. I got, you know, three kids, four grandkids. And I, I, I can't ask for anything more. I mean, I cannot ask for anything, anything, anything more. So with that being said, let me know what your thoughts is about Hannah. How she handled her relationship. Did she go off? How did she handle her persecution? Um... Uh, she got so drunk, uh, drunk in the spirit, praying to God. Her husband thought she was drunk drinking wine because they was drinking at that point in time. Anytime they went to make offers to the Lord, they had a feast pretty much, you know, because they didn't go to church every week like we do. They went up once a year or so often, but they had a relationship with the Most High God. And Hannah had a relationship with the Most High God. And when Penia was picking on her and persecuting her about not having any kids, even though Elkanah probably loved Hannah more and did more for Hannah, you know, she didn't go off. I didn't go off. She didn't fight. I didn't fight. I told the bitch one day, I said, you keep coming down the street because the crossing officer, you outside, you know. Oh, your husband is your husband. And I said, I get on at 7 and I get off at 3, before and after, okay. And she never would step to me then. But she would make a scene in front of her friends. Well, because, you know, it's a public place. I can't tell nobody not to walk through the street. But what I can do tell myself is to be strong and ignore that shit. You're going to get this man out your house. I want to say this nigga out your house soon enough so anyway what else did i want to take from hannah's story um pretty much at the end of hannah's story in chapter two it goes on to tell you god build it god take it away god restore god god will do what he want to do and what worked for me you all and we're going to end it right here is that psalms 55 i remember that day when he didn't want to give me my key that particular day, but he managed to come. I went home. He opened the door, let me in. Then he took off again. So I made arrangements, you know, to change the locks and all that, played that game with him. Actually, he, he kind of, from that day until maybe March, that was in October sometime. So until maybe March, 
you know, he kind of played that in and out, but we wasn't having sex or anything like that. But then I finally put my foot down because if I'm going to be with a man, I got to be able to make love to you. And he wasn't that candidate because he didn't want to go get an AIDS test, any other test. So you can test your ass on out of here and be tested by them demons you running around with. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, um, what was I going to say here? Yeah, so basically... I just put my foot down, I went home, I got in the house, and I went upstairs, I remember just getting on before my face on my bed, and tears was bawling snot, I'm like, why this happened to me, I just, I just started a ministry helping people with free furniture, clothes, food, I just was writing my first books and things, and Oh, it's just like, oh, hell, I was doing ice cream drives, coat drives, things for the community. It's like hell opened up. I got on my face. I said, Lord, I need you to show me in your word. I said, I need you to show me in your word where the healing is. See, I didn't sow a seed. I didn't give no money. I didn't do any of that, y'all. I said, show me where the money is, uh, uh, where the money, where the healing is, where the money is too, Lord. I'll be in the Bible saying where the money at too, y'all. Show me where the healing is. Because the Bible does say I'll give you power to get wealth, but it also says if you meditate on the word and keep it in day and night, it'll make you prosperous. Show me where the healing is. Psalms 55 opened up, y'all, and I'm going to read it to you. Stay tuned. So, guys, I was telling you that Psalms 55 opened up. And I know a lot of people say, don't play that old, just point to something, ask God to show you something, and then just point on the page, and it's there. But I have a different relationship with the Most High God. He says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness, and he'll add the rest. So the rest I needed that day was something for my soul. A lot of people would have went out, got drunk, got high, went and got with another man, did X, Y, Z, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I went upstairs and I got in my prayer closet, okay? I became a warrior that day. I was on a hunt. <laughs> I was seeking that kingdom. And it came out like this, Psalm 55, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. Make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in, in wrath they hate me. My heart was sore pain within me, and the terrors of the death were falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I will fly away and be at rest. Now that song, I'll fly away, oh, glory. Fly away where? <laughs> In this word to get your healing, I ain't asked you for $49.95 and I'll give you a word. I'm giving you a word right now. That should make you want to subscribe, like, and share this channel. Thank you. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I have wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storms and tempests. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Anybody that know about their marriage and it appears to be false evidence appearing real fearful <laughs> that Satan has come upon it and destroyed it, you feel this way sometimes. You cry out like King David in the wilderness like, God, what has just happened to me? This would never happen to me. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. I told you they would come up and down that corner, that intersection where I was crossing people, children, being disrespectful, saying what they did in the bed, X, Y, Z, what she thinks she could do to me. And I said, I get on at 7 and I get off at 3. Let's go. Meet me here then. I never got a response to that. 
and thank God because I beat people with my words. I ain't got to put my hands on you. I can get in your head with the word of God and the devil will get out of it. Ooh, better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. Okay. So it says, Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then could I have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me. That did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Are you hide from the devil? Just like he can disguise himself and make you appear he don't exist. You can disguise yourself and, and not appear to him. You can disguise yourself, Psalms 91, under the wing of the Almighty. And he won't take his ass there, okay? But y'all like to keep playing in this sandbox on his playground. And his playground is your mind. Okay? Anyway, but it was thou a man, mine equal, my God, my acquaintance, a mofo I knew, somebody I grew up with, somebody the same town, ate, broke bread, somebody I knew. Hmm. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of the God in company. We got married in the church, and that's some of the most demonic places in the world right now. Because everybody in there is not godly. Everybody that stepped foot in the church don't know the word of God and is not spiritual. And he put on a good act for years. Uh, for, you know, he put on a great act for years. We was together a little over four years. He put on a great act, you know, about being church, about being godly, about wanting to help kids in the community. He was just selfish. He wanted to make his money, get his weed, and go fuck. Excuse my expression. Go have sex. Okay. And a lot of you people are still in this kind of predicament. But I'm going to share this with you. It says, we took counsel together and walked into the house of God and company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, okay? I don't care what the Bible says. A thousand will fall on one side, ten thousand on another, but none shall come not me. Why? As for me, I will call upon God. And as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Everybody ain't where they need to be in God, but we know God. And God knows us, okay? Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He have delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. That battle was against me. That battle was sent from hell against me. I could have did like Hannah and stayed in it, but I got out. Um, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have not changes, no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. Okay, so I want to read. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteousness to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live half their days, but I will trust in thee. And like Hannah and I, if you begin to trust in the Most High God, you, well, in this case, King David, you will begin to overcome your enemies. You will begin to have better spiritual success in this world. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please subscribe, like, and share. And again, if you take nothing else from this, take this from it. Hannah's story is basically, my heart is over my enemies because I rejoice in salvation. God bless you.